Okay, here we go. That was crazy. The internet died. And it was out. It was like the dark ages here around church. People stumbling and bumping into each other, not knowing what to do. Zombies. Just zombies without internet. Turning the Wi-Fi off so the phone works. What? Hey, Pastor Borgart, we're here. A little late, but here we go. We're waiting on a few people to arrive, and then we're going to gonna rock what is chapter 21. We're going to do this without showing you my personal messages today. That was, that was crazy yesterday. Um, yes. I was getting panicked too, Marilyn. I was getting panicked too. I was about to call Heinz up and have Heinz help me out. Hi, Terry Lynn. Good to see you. Uh, Felicity, uh, Judy, Cheryl, Bobby Joe. Oh, it's going to be a good day. Steve, better late than never. You got it. It was crazy. Get that down, get that fixed. It would have been like a shortage of Mountain Dew. Thank you, McKim. Thank you very, very much. Um, all right. Okay. I got to make two shares and then we'll be good. Higher Things is now live. He's not too busy for me. He loves me. Look. Hines is like Obi-Wan Kenobi to me. And I'm like Anakin Skywalker. Uh, minus the dark side stuff. Hi, Linda Kimmel. Hi, Suzanne. Colonel Davis. Good to see you. All right. So first we're going to share public. Good, good, good. And then we're going to share to a page. Emmanuel Lutheran Church. Going to rock and roll. Genesis 21. yesterday's video minus all the stuff that you got to see pastor Yeager in a, a in a brand new higher thing shirt and stuff like that will be posted on YouTube so if you're behind you will catch up okay and I will try to sum up you know um, uh, uh, buttercup Mary humper Dick and humper Dink in little less than half an hour so we'll, we'll we'll try to sum it all up for you yesterday we um we were we we managed to cruise through chapter twenty, which ended with um, yeah. Uh, Heinz is spelled like the ketchup. Mmm, ketchup. Away we go. Um, remember Abimelech, and remember Abraham. And I'll sum up yesterday by just simply saying that yesterday taught us that God saves us despite us. He rescues us despite us. He, he, he's our God, even when we're not aware that he's our God. It happened in the text and it happened in, in life. We had a living example of it. Um, a good thing that there was no one, um, uh, uh, sending me, um, uh, asking me private questions or, Pastors asking me uh, questions as so often did in my text messages, or I'd have been fired. But um, God looking out for me, uh, God looking out for Abraham and Sarah, all of the examples of, of that. And that's what we learned yesterday, that God rescues us even when we don't know that um, he's going to rescue us. Abraham tells Abimelech that Sarah is his, is his sister, Again, God visits Abimelech in a dream and says, basically, you know, I'm going to kill you unless you get rid of that man's wife. Abimelech's like, God, you know, don't kill innocent people. He said that she was his sister. I didn't lay a hand on her. God's like, I did. I kept you from laying a hand on her. So I saved you. But you go you go to Abraham. He's a man of God. He will... Um, no, 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 don't Felicity, don't, don't tell me the sound's off because the sound's on. Go to, um, go to uh, uh, Abraham. He will pray for you and you'll be healed. 
And we find out that Abimelech goes to Abraham. Abraham prays Abraham and says to Abraham, what have I done to you? Where's my sin? I could have done bad things to your wife. God would have visited judgment on me. You got to pray for us. You got you to save us. And he did. And the wombs of, of Abimelech's kingdom were open, of, of his house were open. Um, so God closed all the wombs of his house to preserve Sarah from any sort of trouble. And then God opens the wounds at the prayer of, um, at the prayer of Abraham. So that brings us into chapter 21, which is our goal today to get at least halfway through. Um, and away we go. Uh, the Lord visited Sarah. Oh, you know, the good part of the movie, the part of the movie that you love, the good part of the movie, the part of the movie that you can watch over and over and over again. Um, no, I do not think so. Um, that part of the movie that um, it tears you up and it gets you every single time. OK, um, the part of Elf where he runs around uh, and he's, he's running around New York and he's learning about everything and, and he's learning about life. And it's just a, f a good part of the movie. The part of the romantical show where you, you can watch it every time where the guy gets the girl. Um, this is, this is, this is that part of the story. Sarah has been barren. She's been barren. And it was, it was bad in the ancient world, just as it's bad today. Um, we have made progress to a lot of things, but, uh, uh, but the church and our culture is full of the sadness and the tears of barren women. Hi, Priscilla, the Lord be with you. You're not late. I, I was late. And of course, Scylla, honey, we're going to Graceland. Uh, so, um, uh, This is what God is about to do. Uh, miraculous. Um, uh, the, the Lord be with you, Sue. Good to see you. Um, uh, what God's about to do is, is when you got mail, when she comes around the corner and there's uh, Tom Hanks and the dog and she's like, I hoped it was you. Um, it's it's uh, 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 two weeks notice where Hugh Grant gives the great speech about um, how he he didn't sell the the building and he gave up everything uh, for her. It's it's um, it's officer and the gentleman where she where where he comes in and he picks her up and there and Joe Cocker singing in the background, you know, love lift us up where we belong. It's all the good thing, but it, but, but what, what makes it better than all of those is that this really happened. This really happened. This happened to Abraham. This happened to Sarah. The Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did. He assad to Sarah as he had promised. As he had um, spoken as he had worded, as he had devoured. I might have lost my man card from all those romantical shows that I just referenced, but you know. Yes, Maggie, I'm super sorry. Although in Louisiana, we do have rodents of unusual size. Thor, Thor, speaking of rodents of unusual size, where are you, buddy? Thor. That's very, very odd. I'll just start throwing treats until he, he comes. Hey, buddy, you want a treat? You want a treat? He's had a bad day. It was VBS and he spent the whole day pinned up in this office. Um, upset about the, 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 the evil children that were outside his door. He just sat there. He's like, 
Sarah conceived, praise God, and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the time which God had spoken to him. So, remember, right before the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, God promised to visit Abraham a year from then and 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 she would be she would conceive it she would she would have a son and so that joy eclipses the year anniversary of the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah um she conceived and bore a son bore Abraham a son in his old age at the time in which God had dabvard him and Abraham Korah, he, he, he called the name of his son Isaac. While we wait for the new merchandise from Higher Things, I just have my LSU Championship Cup. National Champions. Um... <laughs> Richard, um, I, I don't actually remember any of it, Richard, for you to send a four page single space letter. Um, uh, I just remember the end and I might have just seen the end in um, a YouTube video like referencing, um, uh, you know, top 10 cheesiest endings or something because um, I watch a lot of YouTube. But the, uh, uh, Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him again. This is repetition for the sake of emphasis. Repetition for the sake of emphasis. Did I say it was repeti repetition for the sake of emphasis? And Hebrew does this in order to, to sort of highlight something. If my poor DP gets another four-page single-space letter, I don't know what he'll do. Defending me is a full-time job. Um, um, thanks, Cherry Lynn. Got my back. Um, all right, so, um, so notice Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. Three verses, Sarah mentioned in all three, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. And, and, and Sarah was visited. Oh, it's four times. Um, and the Lord did to Sarah as he promised. Um, uh, and Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in her old age. And Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him, whom Sarah bore to him. As Isaac, do you do you do you do you do you see that? We're 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 um um uh, there is in this uh, it's just a beautiful emphatic Sarah has a baby and and it is as the Lord promised and the miracle has been done and God did it. And he did it just as he said. He spoke and he did it. Just like he will promise a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph that he she will have a child even though she doesn't know a man. He promised Sarah that in Sarah's old age she would have a child. And the Septuagint language is, it, is exactly the same. No words are not possible with God. And you could take that to the bank in your own life that your sins, however great or small, however dreadful or, um, uh, or deadly, have been taken on by the Son of God in your place, child of Abraham, son of David.
and Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, just as God had commanded him to do. So, eight days, the promise, there's a, a circumcision. Isaac is familyed into the household of God. The covenant kept God being faithful. Remember, and we talked about covenants as, as promises. We should not look at this as a quid pro quo, um, which we all learned about recently. Uh, that 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 like God's end of the bargain is um, that God's end of the bargain is is I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. And if you could number the stars, um, that so shall your descendants be. If you could number the sands on the shore, so shall your descendants be. And your and and what you're going to do is you're going to lose a piece of your flesh. What um what what is going on is I'm going to do this for you. God even is the one that passes between the dead animal. Um, covenants are cut, blood is shed, and you walk through the, the the dead animal with the understanding that the one who breaks the covenant ends up like the animal. Um. God is the one who, in the form of a torch, two chapters ago, crossed through the dead animal, saying, the one who's going to die if this covenant isn't kept is God. The sign of the kept covenant, the sign that God is doing these things, is a rainbow in the sky. He's not going to flood the earth again. And circumcised male children, children of Abraham. And as much as as the rainbow in the sky is not a work that we do, the circumcision is a sign that his promise is being kept by him. That's why I think bereath, the Hebrew word, is better translated promise than covenant. Because God's making promises. And unlike the songs that make the whole world sing, um, God is not keeping making promises, promises that you never keep. All right. I feel like I've gotten my second wind. Internet not working. Crazy technological problems yesterday. It's like Dumb and Dumber. Pets' heads falling off. Pretty bird, pretty bird. All right, here we go. Um, eighth day, I like the comment, Richard. Um, even though you're going to send a four-page single-space letter on me, uh, the eighth day, new creation, seven plus one, baptism, the like. Um, you're a child of God. Yes, Maggie, great quote. Dogs and cats living together. It's the apocalypse, man. It's Ghostbusters. If there's something strange in your neighborhood, Maggie's in the zone too. Great work, Maggie. Great movie reference. Love those 80s movies. All right. And a reminder to the miracle. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. And, 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 and I want you to just sort of, I, I, I can't communicate the joy. Um, yeah. And I can't con con communicate the joy to you of this without, I mean, listen to, listen to Sarah. God has made laughter for me. And remember, um, laughter is uh, laughing to laugh. Um, uh, or, or I laugh, uh, uh, Isaac. Uh, God has isaac me. He has made, so he turned her unbelief and laughter that, um, um, her, her unbelief and her despair and, and her chuckling at the promise of God. He turned that into joy. 
I mean, I'm just getting so excited for her. I mean, you should just be teary eyed. I'm getting there um, for her or it could be lack of sleep. But she's like, God has made, um, Sarah said, God has made laughter for me. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the the uh, uh, Diet Mountain Dew went down the wrong way. I don't have COVID. It's okay. Um, <coughs> God has made laughter for me. And everyone who hears will laugh over me. They're going to laugh with me. They're going to rejoice with me. And Isaac is a child of joy. He's a child of laughter. And, and, and laughter before his birth is unbelief. Laughter laughter after his birth is faith. Look at what God has done. What a good God you are, God. Who's like you? There's no God like you. In fact, there isn't God other than you. And she said, uh, uh, who would have said, uh, who would have proclaimed, um, who would have spoken to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in my old age. Howdy, howdy, Ann. You're right on time. We had internet problems. All right. That's the end of this section. Um, full of joy and full of happiness and full of faith and because God has kept his promise. God has kept his promise. He's a good God. The child grew and was weaned. And Abraham uh, Assad, he made a great day, a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. Now, um, why not his birthday? Uh, Ted Rosenblatt in the house. Good to see you, Ted. So, um, you know, uh, Luther has a long section about, about how Augustine says that, um, uh, here Augustine asks why Abraham made a feast and it, a great one at that, and not on the birth, the day of birth or circumcision, but on the day on weaning, since the day of birth appears to be more suitable for a feast, um, uh, the day of, you know, um, and, and, and Augustine goes spiritual that the baby needs, uh, real spiritual food. He needs, he needs to live, uh, from the word of God. And, and Luther, Luther says, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's just not true. Uh, that's just, that's just idle speculation. The truth is that, that he celebrated it on the day he celebrated it. And, um, uh, therefore, our opinion about the very saintly man Abraham can be follows. He was unwilling to imitate the customs of the heathen because he had been warned by the, either by the spirit or the saintly fathers and his ancestors who were living at the time, Moses. So he, so instead he doesn't do birthday. He doesn't do circumcision day. He does, uh, the day that he chooses. Okay. I don't particularly care. I just know that Abraham is super happy and has a party. But now there's different laughter in verse 9. And that is, Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, whom she had born to Abraham. She saw him, Isaac. Him. So at this day, this big day, this 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 day that that they're having a feast, uh, 
there's a little bit of icky. And a little bit of icky is 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 Ishmael, who isn't even addressed by name. This is this don't I know I say this a lot, but but I mean this. Don't miss this. <laughs> He's not mentioned by name. He's not mentioned by name because the kid who the spotlight should be on, the heir, the one who the seed is going to come from, is having his party, his weaning day. Ishmael, the oldest son, is not the child of promise. That doesn't mean that God doesn't love him, but he's not the child of promise. Don't miss this. And Moses makes it very clear that he's not the child of promise by not mentioning his name. The scriptures do this a lot. A parable. There were two guys. There's a rich guy and a beggar named Lazarus. The rich guy had sumptuous parties every single night. The poor guy was at his gates. He ate the scraps and his situation was so bad that the dogs came. You hear my southern accent there? The dogs came and licked his sores. They both died. Lazarus goes to the bosom of Abraham. Lazarus has a name. Lazarus is a child of God. Exactly, Bobby Joe. You have got it. Not called by name because he's not the child of promise and it is the special day of the one who is the child of promise, Isaac. Names matter. Names mean things. Jesus' name means Yahweh saves. You shall call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. That's what Jesus' name means. Jacob's name means he grasps, as in he grasps hold of Esau, whose name means hairy man, Esau's ankle. I could go on, but the point here is the lack of a name. Come here, buddy. The lack of a name is important. Sarah, 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 Sarah. Look at that guy. The stars here. You watch the treats? No. I didn't watch the treats. I didn't watch the swap. Okay, but I'll eat it. But I'm not liking it. Got the cheap treats and not the good stuff. Whoops, you missed it, buddy. Want one more? Missed that one too, bud. All right. Any text from over there? Missed that one too, buddy. Um, now, Mama, though, who has a name, Mama sees it. Mama sees Hagar's, the Egyptian's child, laughing. Mama don't like that. Verse 10. So Mama, she goes and says to Abraham, a verse that will be later on quoted by St. Paul, concerning the law and Sinai. Expel the female slave with her son. For the son... of the slave, female slave, will not inherit with my boy, Isaac. Um, my 
Mama has had enough. Mama's done. Make no mistake about it. Yeah. Right, Maggie. Oh, Maggie, you are going to love this part. What follows next is some really hard reading. But first, we have to understand what's going on. Ishmael, eh, let's not call him by name since he's not mentioned by name in the text. The son of the slave woman is the eldest. Sarah had given Hagar... You found the treats I found er, I, I threw earlier? Um, Sarah had given Hagar to Abraham saying, I'll have a child through her. Remember that? That's how this old mess started. And Abraham was like, you want me to sleep with somebody else? Okay. I mean, I'll do it, but okay. Um, that was not supposed to be Hagar's kid. That was supposed to be Sarah's kid. But it didn't turn out that way. As soon as Hagar had the baby, Hagar began to despise Sarah. Hagar began to push her son forward. Hagar began to say that her son was the heir. And Ishmael is a big deal. How's it going, cute guy? Ishmael is a big deal. Make no mistake about it. Ishmael is, as Thor would say, huge. Don't tell him about my stash. Uh... I won't tell him about your secret stash, buddy. So, Ishmael is his own big deal. Make no mistake about it. Ishmael is a big deal. But he's not Isaac. And so Ishmael is bringing into this party all of the I'm the firstborn, I'm the heir stuff. And that's not cool. That is not cool. That is not cool. And a little bit of haughtiness. Laughing at his younger half-brother. Who ain't all that, you see. Because Ishmael is the big deal. And that is not what God intended. That is not God's word. God's word is who is the big deal. Who is the child of promise. Who is the heir. And it doesn't matter... That Hagar was, was pregnant first. Who is the heir? Expel this slave woman with her son. Nobody is named. Ooh, mama's had enough. Sarah doesn't name anyone. It's a slave woman and a son. Because that woman's child will not be the heir with my son Isaac. My son Isaac. Oh, you would ask that, Jean. I... I don't remember the math on that. Um, um, he was 14. He was 14. He's 14. So that gives you a, 
that gives you a, a, a uh, 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 13, 14. So he was 13 when he was circumcised. And that means another year after that makes him 14. Simple math. It is safe to open under other windows today. Thank you. Thank you, Maggie. You are correct, sir. It's the old Saturday Night Live with Ed McMahon. Johnny would say something like, You are correct, sir. You are correct, Maggie. All right. Um, oh, yeah. So we got all of that teenage body language, all of that, and Mama has had enough. And she says, cast her out, cast him out, that my son's the heir, do it. What happens next is simply unbelievable. Um, the... Um, those words, they weren't displeasing to, uh, to Abraham. That's not, they were yara, they were hurtful, they were evil, they were wicked to him. Um, so he heard those words as wicked. They were very displeasing. Uh, that's, that's too weak. They, 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 they came off as wicked to Abraham on account of his Ben, his son. See this little Hebrew word here? That's Ben. Um, ben Beno, which is um, his son. Judah Ben Hur is Judah, son of Hur. Little Hebrew lesson here. For free. For free. Anyway. Elohim said to Abraham, and I told you, what I, what I, what I, what I told you was that the next part is, 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 is nothing short of astounding. Okay? Be not displeased. Don't think the whole thing is, ha, oh, hold it there. Yeah, Terry. Terry Lynn, you got it right. Terry Lynn, you got it right. And there's nothing wrong with this right now. That Abraham sees that as... is, See, see, see Sarah, uh, Abraham is now currently between um, between two women. And he sees himself as in, in a fight between two women. Between Hagar, who is um, his wife, but also... Sarah's maidservant, the son, Ishmael, who he loves, and this will be the second time that he's spoken up for Ishmael, and Isaac, the son that is promised, Sarah, his, I, want, I don't want to say actual wife, but his, his, his wife, the wife. And he's like, well, this isn't cool with me because I love Ishmael. Do not see this thing as wicked on behalf of the boy or because of your slave girl. Hmm. That's an interesting, um, I, I thought it would have been a different uh, word in Latin, but say, because you get to see my screen, you get to see the, the, the when the ADHD kicks in and I'm I'm curious to what something says in Latin. Um yeah. Um don't be displeased because of the boy or because of the slave slave girl. Wait for it. Whatever Sarah says to you do as she tells you. For through Isaac, 
Um, your offspring will be called, or your seed will 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 be called. Okay. This. This is crazy. Remember the whole problem. The whole problem began by Adam listening to his wife. So anyone who tells you, they always quote this. They shouldn't listen to your wife. They got Adam in problems. No, no. The problem was not that he listened to his wife. The problem was that what he was, what he did listening to his wife was contrary to the word of God. Here, Sarah is actually in the right and Abraham is actually in the wrong. Seriously. Seriously. That's the problem. So anybody who gets sort of flippant and goes, Cal is your wife. I got Adam in trouble. No. The problem was that Adam listened to his wife over and against God. Sarah is actually quoting what God has promised. And Abraham is caught up in things which are not word of God. We need Luther on this in just a wee bit. Is it highlighted? Because I highlighted some stuff. It'll come. It'll come. It'll come. It'll come. Paul quotes this about Sinai, but we'll get to that. I want to continue on. Next verse. Don't, don't, dis, don't be displeased because of the boy. Don't, don't look down on what she's saying because of the boy. Oh, Terry Lynn, this is hard because what happens to, what happens to, what happens to, what's about to happen to Ishmael is law and gospel. And we, and, 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 and God does not want to get Abraham to stand in the way of his law. Abraham can't be an antinomian here. Okay? He can't. God is about to apply law to a situation. And a, a situation that needs law. Hagar and Ishmael need the law. Because they aren't the big deal here. His son, Jesus, is the big deal. And that line goes through Isaac. Oh. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she says. For through Isaac shall your, us, shall your seed be called. Your seed is, the big deal is, is, is Isaac. And he does remind him, I'm going to make a big nation. I'm going to make a nation. The son of the slave girl and now, now, God still hasn't mentioned her. <laughs> right, 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 right. This should have. This should always be included in premarital counseling. From now on, it will be, because the issue is not. Don't listen to your wife. Do you hear that, McKim? Sorry, he's not listening. The issue is not. Don't listen to your wife. The issue is. Don't listen to your wife over and against the word of God. And the issue then is, this is 1 Peter 3, Sarah is in the right, Sarah is living out her faith, and Sarah is, is going to save Abraham who's in the wrong, even though all his feelings are in the right place. I will make a nation of the son of the slave woman also, because he's your seed too. But, but, that nation isn't the child of promise. Yes. And that's referenced, Maggie, in 1 Peter 3. So like when your husband doubts, when your husband doesn't believe, your godly conduct, like Sarah, it is, is what brings him back. So that's, um, for those of you scoring at home, that's submission for two reasons. 
Wives submit to their husbands because the church submits to Christ. And that submission is to believe that he's going to die for us. So a wife that submits to her husband is saying, I believe that you're going to die for me. I believe that you're going to do everything that you do for my good. I believe that you're Christ in this relationship and I'm the church. The church receives from Christ salvation and I'm going to receive from you your life. You're going to give your life for him. Who wants to marry somebody who's like, when the robber comes, goes, shoot her first. No, 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 no. I believe I'm going to line up behind you. I believe that I'm going to line up behind you so that when the, when the bad people come, they shoot you first. That's Ephesians 5. 1 Peter 3 is, I'm sorry for the bad finger. 1 Peter 3 is, is I'm going to line up behind you so that when you doubt and despair, I'm going to be faithful to you and still stand behind you. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to still stand behind you in order that you might be saved too. And that's what happens here. Ha! Right, Terry Lynn. Man's going to be scouring the word so that he doesn't um, have to be wrong, which ain't a bad thing. Exactly. Back to the text. Oh, we're having fun today. I'm glad that we got together. This has made my day. I was, whew, I was starting to get crabby. All right, so... Uh, Abraham rose early in the morning, took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child, and he sent her away. Now, this is meant, Luther says, the language here is meant to get you right here. All right, it's right, right there. It's supposed to get you right in the, um, it's supposed to get you right here. It's supposed to get you in the, in the sad place. Cause like, he's like, all right, I know I married you. I know I had a kid with you, but you got to go. You got to go. Sorry. You just got to go. I'm sorry. I, I can't. Right, it gets you right in the fields. You got it, uh, Maggie. In the solar plexus. Um, and Thor has left the building. You got no treats for me? I'm out of here. All right, so, um, so bread, water, gone. Child on her, uh, the, the, the bread and the water is on her shoulder uh, along with the child and she's sent away and she departs and the language is wandering the wilderness of Beersheba. So she, she, she's literally wandering around. And, and, the, um, and the... It's meant to be sad. And she's so sort of out of sorts that she's just sort of wandering around. And she's so sort of out of sorts that she doesn't know where she's going. I mean, Beersheba's filled with, with people with tents, says Luther. But, but, but Hagar is so despondent that she doesn't know where she's going. <laughs> it's a dry heat. I love that, Maggie. Maggie, you're, you're having a good day. When the water skin was gone, she puts the child, tells him to sit down under, under one of the bushes. Just sit in the shade, kid. Just, I mean, this is, and we're, and this isn't even this isn't even a good character. She's a bad... Hagar um, wasn't this pillar of virtue. She wasn't a sweet person. And, and now she went from like mocking... Sarah 
to um, just telling her kid, just, 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 just sit down here. And then she went up uh, um, and sat down opposite of him a good ways off, a distance of a bow shot. Now, this is, this is important because, um, yeah, exactly right, Richard. Um, uh, Abe protecting his son, Peter protecting Jesus' his life in Matthew 6, teen. Um, Peter had a heart full of love. Um, for Jesus and and tells him you're not going to the cross. Um, it's just this is such a sad part though. So she goes about a bow shot away and bow shot's important it, it, because it's going to come up later. She's about a bow shot away and she says to herself just I, I, I can't look on the death of my boy. And she and she sat opposite of him. Man, I'm getting all torn up here. She sat opposite of him and she lifted up her voice and she um and she wept. And it's supposed to be sad. And it's supposed to be awful. And you're supposed to think that Ishmael deserves better than this death. And she's a villain. Hagar is not a nice person. For God gives nothing to anyone as a result of a right. This is Luther in accordance with the statement in Romans 11, who has first given to him. Nor is God anyone's debtor, for we would fare badly if he were our debtor, if we got what we deserved from him. Indeed, we are all indebted to God. Therefore, if he gives us something, he gives it not because of right, but out of grace, which he lavishly and richly offers to all who believe his promise. Ishmael, and his son and his mother must learn this lesson, since both wanted to proceed against Isaac on the strength of a right. Um, awful movie, Unforgiven. Clint Eastwood. I get my man card back with it. There is uh, Gene Hackman at the end of the movie, laying on the ground, and and about to die. He's like, I don't deserve this to die like this. And Clint looks at him and says, deserves got nothing to do with it. Um, Ishmael and his mother must learn this. Accordingly, I have no doubt after this presumption of a right was destroyed by so harsh of an expuls expulsion, Ishmael and his mother returned to Abraham for the option of the Jews that, um, therefore, this account serves to teach us that we have nothing by reason of right, but that everything, that everything comes as a result of the grace of God. If you look at this and go, this is so wrong. Why is Ishmael getting this bad treatment? You've got it all wrong. We deserve to be cast out of God's family. We deserve what happens to Ishmael. We deserve it. We don't deserve to be part of God's family. We don't deserve to be on God's team. We deserve to be for our children and our children's children to be a bow's distance away and we're like, just don't make me watch them die, God. That's what we deserve. We don't get that. It's by the grace of God. Solely by the grace of God. Accordingly, by this example of Ishmael, God makes it clear that he knows he owes nobody anything. Before him, therefore, let no one boast of, of, a glo of or, or glory in his righteousness or merit, but let the whole world be subject to God to prostrate itself, invoke his grace and mercy, 
and with one accord say, Enter not into judgment with thy servant. Apart from Christ, we deserve nothing but punishment. And the grace of God, and the grace of God, the, the Jesus is in the line of Isaac, not Ishmael. Ishmael yes, wants to usurp that. He wants to take it. He's owed it. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. One more beautiful quote. For before God, nothing except grace has any value. And this is, I like this quote, even though it's not politically correct. The Turks, that is the Muslims, the Jews, and the Pope um, apprehended it through, if they, if they were to apprehend it through Christ, grace, through Christ, they would be saved. But since they are utterly blinded, they reject grace and rely on right and merit, and therefore they perish eternally. And you can look at that in a negative sense, but I choose to look at that comment in a positive sense. Anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Anyone who calls on the, on the one born of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is saved. It doesn't matter what creed, nationality, where are you from, what color of your skin, um, your economic status, uh, uh, whether you're rich, poor, whether you're, um, whether, you, whether you're the apple of your mother's eye or you're the black sheep like I am of my family. I even wear black. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. All right? And whoever doesn't has already standing condemned. And, 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 and nobody, except the Calvinists, nobody rejoices in anyone going to hell. In fact, we rejoice that God saves someone. The answer to the question of why some, not others... Why Isaac and not Ishmael? Is answered by, why anyone? Terry Lynn, do you deserve the mercy of God? Judy, do you deserve the mercy of God? I know Ted Rosenblatt, he does not deserve the mercy of God. I'm just going to get that out of the way right now. Um, uh, Cindy, Maggie, Richard, Pat, Erica, Felicity, do you deserve the mercy of God? And the answer is a resounding no. Well, how do you get it? Grace alone. Well, what's the difference between you and the unbelieving hordes of those who um, who are against the, 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 the gospel of God? Nothing. There is no difference between you and sinners. No difference at all. And yes, I can attest to the fact that, um, oh man, I'm almost at an hour. I can attest to the fact that Ted Rosenblatt is the chief of sinners. <laughs> oh, that made my day. But because of the grace and mercy of God, not because of earned or deserved, not because of merited or right, God will shut down heaven if he doesn't have Terry Lynn. Because of the gospel. Because of the gospel. Because of the gospel. Not because of earned or deserved, but because of the gospel. Because of the gospel. Because God does not treat us as we deserve or merit but instead he has taken all of our sins and put them on his son and by his son's stripes we are healed. We deserve nothing but condemnation and punishment, but by the grace of God he saves us. And he's going to save Ishmael. He laws Ishmael in order to gospel him. He laws Ishmael in order to bring him low so that he could gospel Ishmael. So he could gospel him. And that, I, I, I hate breaking a pericope up, but, but Sandra is going to literally kill me for going an hour. So tomorrow, we will finish this up. I promise you it's going to end happy. 
It's going to end happy, but you have to come back tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel. And we will finish this story, cruise through Abimelech, back, and we'll see Isaac sacrificed. You don't want to miss it. Um, go to higherthings.org also. Got to make sure that you get this. Go to higherthings.org and check out the virtual conference. Don't miss the in, 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 in the virtual conference. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Higherthings.org. Look at it. Look on it today. Have a great day. Um, I'm really, really sorry, Sandra. I lost track of time. Um, hope you can forgive me. Have a blessed day.